Okay, in this lesson we're going to cover how to use a waveform. DaVinci Resolve does have other scopes, but we're going to stick with waveform now. It's typically uh, one of the first scopes to use when you're learning about scopes. Um, and it's pretty easy to look at. Um, let's get started. Uh, basically, what you want to remember about the waveforms is that this lower area down here, where the zero is, that's where your darker regions, your shadows, your true blacks, um, lift, whatever you want to call it, middle area, midtones, and then this upper range here, highlights or the brighter areas. So if you were to lay this chart here, the scope, immediate, like completely over this image, then you would notice that this left portion here is dark. And if you look at the scopes, all of the data is down here towards this lower region, uh, which is where the shadows and the darker portions live. There's this highlight here in the background on the painting, and you can see that this is a higher area in the scope. And then this area here is kind of in between the two, so you can see that this is raised a little bit more than the left side, and it's in between these highlights here. It also gives you some color information. If you look at this guy's face, he's a little bit red. And we can see that there's a little extra red here kind of popping up towards the top. She's got this kind of warm highlight on the back of her head here. And we can see that a little bit of kind of warmer red colors pop up here as well. So for the most part, that's basically how you would read this waveform. Again, shadows, midtones, highlights, and if you lay it over the image, it basically tells you exactly what's going on in that image. If we jump maybe to something like this, so this image, if you look at it, it was kind of a, a darker, slightly contrasty image, heavy shadows with a little bit of a pop in highlights, and that's kind of what this tells you. If we go to something that's a little bit more balanced, it's not really super contrasty in the way the image is lit, and you can tell that the waveform kind of reflects that information. Um, if we see, there's some shadowy areas across here, the hair, there's little bits of shadow, and if we look here, we can see that these uh, blacks and shadows in the image are kind of hitting the bottom, which is zero here, kind of reflects something that's a true black. Um, if we go to something, for example, like this, this is, by the way, shot log, we won't get into that right now, but you can see that even though we know that his hair is a shadow region, we can see how elevated that is, okay? If we go back here, we can see that their hair, or the shadow here in the collar, or this portion here is black, and we can see how crushed those shadows are. And crushed is just a word that means uh, bringing down blacks past the point of, you could say, a true black. So if you were to lay the shadows of an image right perfectly on that line, you could say that's a true black. But if you start crushing the blacks or the shadows, it means you're starting to lose data in those shadows. So if I were to exaggerate this and really crush the shadows, Keep your eye here on the waveform, and you can see that whenever you see anything like this on a waveform, that means that you are crushing the shadows and losing data. Depending on who you ask, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. If you want a very contrasty, gritty look, it's not a bad thing at all. People crush shadows all the time. A lot of probably the more popular looks that you know have crushed shadows. Okay, so let's say I'd, I exaggerate the gritty look in this. So I'm going to definitely crush the shadows and you can see how the image reflects that. Okay, and then we have this little highlight on the drum. That's what this little hump here is and you can see it's green, which is the same thing as the drum. Um, dark image. I think you're probably catching on by now. Very dark image. 
and you can see that all the data in this image is laying a little bit below the 512 here. Um, and, and as you can also see, even though this is a dark image, you can see that the shadows are not touching the line where the zero is here. They're elevated just a little bit. And if you, and knowing that, you can look at this image and see that, you know what, this actually is not a true, true black. If you look at this guy here, you can see the, the blacks are raised just a tiny bit, especially compared to say, this black and it's raised just a little bit, okay? And then the little highlights in the background, that's what these peaks are. This definitely has a very kind of teal color tone to it, and you can see that reflected in the waveforms. Okay, so now we'll take a look at one last image. This one, you can see, has a very definite, it's almost like the image is split in half. The upper half is the sky, the lower half is the uh, ground kind of dusty and then the girl here and we can ref see that here reflected okay so this little dip and then all the information here is her and then all of this information you can see is the sky and then the very kind of dusty look down here so you can see how that reflects how the information is distributed from this shot to this shot to this shot and then this shot here. Um, so that is a very basic introduction to uh, waveform monitors, okay? In the next lesson, uh, we will go over the order of operations and you will start to see how this is actually used when you're doing a color correction or a color grade. The best way I can explain how helpful this is, it's kind of the objective unbiased eye because a lot of times when we've been looking at images too long believe it or not we might look at something like this and not notice that it's kind of green or kind of teal or kind of blue or whatever the color might be if we've been looking at 30 minutes of footage in this film that is all blue after a while we kind of start kind of losing our bearings and waveforms and the scopes are very useful so that we can kind of look at it, see little pops of green and say, oh yeah, this it is a little green, I need to balance it. Or a lot of people, you would be surprised how they might look at this image and never even noticed how kind of dusty and orange this is. But then by looking at the waveform, you might see that there's elevated reds or that maybe the sky is actually green instead of blue and that'll let you make slightly different adjustments down here to kind of start making things look a little bit more how you want them to look. Okay, so that was a very quick overview of how the waveform monitor works. Um, hopefully that was helpful, and we'll see you in the next lesson.